Hello, my name is Daniel Swartz, and this is an exclusive tutorial for Vector Toots Plus. Today I'm going to be talking about the Recolor dialog box in Adobe Illustrator. It's one of my favorite tools. Uh, once I discovered how to use it, it really freed me up to a lot of new color ideas and color experimentation, and a lot of solutions that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of uh, to start off with a piece. And this is useful for both illustration and for layouts and graphic design. It can really be used either way. But before we jump into the actual dialog box, let's set a good foundation of how color is used in Adobe Illustrator so we can set things up to use the recolor dialog box well. First of all, as you should already know, there are two color properties to every object or path in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to select these petals here and in your color panel and over here in the toolbar there are two squares which are are mirrored the upper one is your fill color or that's the color inside of an object the lower one is the stroke color and that's the outside of the object or the outline whatever you want to refer to it as by hitting the X key you can toggle in between which property you're working on so if I am uh, the fill one is on top that's the color that I'm editing and I can use my sliders and uh, choose any color I would like or I can pick a swatch down here to recolor. Now just step back to the originals. Likewise you can do the same with your stroke color by changing you know, any mix of, of the sliders in the color panel. Now CMYK is just one way to work. There are several ways. This is short for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The four color properties that are used to uh, create different colors on presses or even in your color laser printers. If you'd like to, on the options fly out here, which is up here to the left, you can look at different ways uh, to mix color. For instance, RGB, which is red, green, blue, is not used for printing but for screens such as a flat screen uh, TV or perhaps your computer monitor. One of my ways I like to work is in hue saturation black or HSB. In perhaps your intro to design classes, you may have talked about color or color theory courses. And HSB is oftentimes referred to in art as HSV for hue saturation value. Hue is where the color lies along the visible spectrum. S is the saturation or the intensity of that pigment. And B or V is the darkness or brightness of that color. So I can ch take the saturation way down and I can make it really dark or I can bring the saturation up and just mix them any way I want to or simply swing to the other side of the spectrum if I'd like. Traditionally I work in CMYK or HSB they just make a lot of sense to me the way the color works partially because CMYK is a lot like mixing actual paint and so I can kind of think of adding less red or more red or green or blue or whatever I'm, I'm playing with. So every object has these properties and that's what we can easily recolor with. Now I have the same red here. Instead of writing down, let's go back to CMYK, instead of writing down the exact percentages of that ink that's being used, it's easy to create swatches. So I could create this red and drag it into my swatches panel, and you'll see a little plus sign pops up, and now the red shows up in my swatches panel. And then that's a, a new color that I can reuse. So even if I'm drawing things another color like this green, if I want to reuse this red, I can easily click over here and as long as the fill color is the um, the focal property then that will change to whatever swatch I, I clicked on. Even better we can create color groups so if I really like a set of colors I can make a new folder and awesome colors is what we'll name it and I can put red there and then I can make a green and drag that into that folder and see the folder becomes highlighted and it drops in there and make this